Welcome back, folks, to more Let's Play Pokemon Crystal. No Poke Centers, no Pokemarts. In our last episode, we made all the final preparations before we were set to take on the Pokemon League. And uh, as you can see, folks, our party is now good to go. We've got everyone pretty much in a position where they need to be. Their levels are a little bit higher than um, they were last episode, just for the sake of getting those few extra points that we can get. And uh, here we go, folks. Our, f the f our first opponent is Will. He's certainly going to be no pushover, but um, hopefully we can deal with him without too much trouble. He's got Psychic-type Pokemon, and uh, hopefully we've got the Mustard to take on him. So here we go. I think all of his Pokemon know Psychic, so realistically, Nidoking's going to be almost completely useless in this fight. So hopefully Espeon and uh, the rest can take on everything they need to. The Dark Glasses hopefully will give us that little bit of extra power that we need to take on this Zatu. So I'm hoping that Bite will at least maybe flinch or do a decent chunk, probably at least half of this Zatu's HP. And luckily for us, we get a one-hit KO, so that's great knowledge for us. And uh, Kote is certainly going to benefit from that extra bit of experience. Up next, though, is another Zatu. I believe he's got two in total. This one I think is a little higher level, but uh, hopefully Bite can also one-hit KO it. If it one-hit KO the first one, who's to say it can't do it for the next one? And it just barely fails to KO. Uh, unfortunately, we get hit with a Psychic, but the good thing is we resist that, so we should take a little bit of minimal damage from it. And of course he scores a crit, because, you know, that's fair. And uh, he's going to use a Max Potion, that's perfectly fine. I was just going to finish him off with Quick Attack anyways. It's one less Max Potion for him to use later. So, here we go. Use one more bite. And Zatu is taken down with a crit, so unfortunately that crit didn't come last time to prevent Zatu's own crit. But uh, Malk gains a level, so that's fantastic. And uh, we're rolling along here. Up next, though, is a Jinx. And uh, this Jinx can be annoying. Um, he does have Lovely Kiss, which can put us to sleep. But hopefully he doesn't use that, or hopefully he misses. Hopefully Bite just flat out KOs it, because uh, Jinx defensively isn't that great, so hopefully we can take it down. We just barely fail, and uh, we get hit with a lovely kiss, which kind of stinks. Um, I'm not too afraid of Jinx offensively, so I feel like I'm safe to just go for a full heal here, um, get rid of that status, and uh, continue on. Hopefully he doesn't just flat out use lovely kiss again. Good thing, he just use, decides to use double slap, and hopefully it doesn't hit five times. But of course it does, because that's the kind of luck we've had so far. We've got a crit, we've got five hit double slap, so things aren't going too perfect for us, but uh, we're slowly moving along here. Either way, Bite should be able to take out this Jinx from this point, which it does. And uh, Kote's just rolling along here. Three guys, up, three guys up and three guys down. Up next, though, is an Executor. And uh, I believe that Xerxes should be able to take this thing on. Um, it's probably going to be a two-hit KO at worst, especially. But uh, I believe Xerxes has the mustard to deal with this thing, no problem. So here we go. I believe two Flame Wheels should get the job done, so let's go. Flame Wheel. I don't think Executor has the firepower to KO us back, so um, if we get a two-hit KO, that should be great. And... Wow, that wasn't even a crit? That's awesome. So we're going to take minimal damage from this Leech Seed. And uh, hopefully, I don't imagine he has another Max Potion. But if he does, sweet. No Max Potion, which means we're not going to take any damage from Leech Seed. And we easily deal with that Executor, so that's great. And uh, all this guy has left is one Pokemon, and I believe it's a Slowbro. So Raichu should easily be able to deal with that. So Raichu... Uh, Slowpoke doesn't really have the greatest special defense, it's more of a defensive Pokemon. Or, sure to say, physical, de physically defensive Pokemon. And so, uh, hopefully Raichu can deal with this without too much of an issue. We've got, uh, ten Thunderbolts. I feel content in throwing... Uh, I'm, it's probably gonna be a, it's probably a one-hit KO with Thunder, but just to be on the safe side, I don't want to take too much damage with Raichu. I'm gonna go for the safe two-hit KO. Um, if it's a one-hit KO, that's great. Works out fantastic. If not, then we just finished off with another one. And luckily for us, it's a flat-out one-hit KO, so uh, didn't even need to waste Thunder there. 
So there we go. One poke, one guy down, four to go. So we've certainly made, we certainly got out of that one without too much trouble and issue. Espeon took a little bit more damage than I'd like because of that crit, but everything else basically went smoothly. Uh, I'm just gonna check uh, Shuckle here, basically. Hopefully he's got a berry juice sitting there for us. And unfortunately, that's not the case. We still have a berry there. Um, for this next fight, though, let me see. Um, I feel Kote. You know what? I don't really care about these berries. These berry. This berry juice anymore. I'm just gonna use those berries on um, Espeon because Espeon is gonna be pretty, pretty useful for us in this next fight. Let's just see here. We've got one berry. I'm going to give one to Espeon, and you know what, let's give two to Espeon, just to be on the safe side. So he's about at half HP there. Uh, the first up for this next guy though is, an, I think he, believe, he leads off with an Ariados, or an Ariados. So Xerxes is going to be who we want to lead off with for his, uh, for his flame wheels basically. So here we go, we've got Ko Koga, he's the uh, poison type in this uh, Elite Four. Um, unfortunately not all of his Pokemon are poison type, but for the most part, Typhlosion should be able to get the job done against a couple of them, and uh, I believe we can go proceed from there. So here we go, Koga. So first up, like I said, is an Ariados, who uh, Xerxes should be able to deal with. Ariados isn't exactly fast, and his special defense, especially against fire, is probably pretty weak. Considering Executor almost lived, uh, just barely lived a flame wheel, Ariados is not going to survive this. So there we go. One Pokemon down, four to go. So we're certainly making an excellent amount of progress so far, uh, taking minimal losses. Up next, though, is a Foratress, who is four times weak to uh, Flame Wheel. So hopefully Typhlosion can take him down. Um, t Foratress can be a little bit more defensive, so maybe it won't, but we've got a four times super effective move. We're going to use it and hopefully deal take out take this thing out. It's got spikes, it's got explosions, so it can be a bit of an issue. At least, it, but uh, luckily for us, one flat, one hit KO, and Xerxes is just trucking along here, so... He may have been complaining about his uh, offensive capabilities earlier in the game, but certainly nothing to argue with right here. Up next though is a Muck, and thanks to uh, Malk's newly learned move in Earthquake, and Muck's weaker physical, physically defensive side, um, Malk should easily be able to deal with this. The good thing is for us, Malk is also a Pokemon that can't get t toxic or poisoned, I should say. and. Uh, that works out fantastic for us because Earthquake hopefully gets a one-hit KO. If not, we can finish it off with a Surf or something like that. Luckily for us, a flat one-hit KO. So all these type advantages that I worked on earlier on in our run are certainly paying dividends right here, right now. So that's great for us. Melk gets a level. And up next, I thought, think I saw a Crobat. So um, I want to send out Raichu. Yeah. Er... Raichu or Kote? Um, I'm going to send out Raichu, hope for the best. And unfortunately, I misread that. It's a Venomoth, so that kind of really stinks. But uh, I believe Raichu should be able to take this thing on. I'm going to hope that... Um, I'm going to go for Thunderbolt, or Thunderbolt or Thunder. You know what? I'm going to go for Thunder. I'm feeling, I'm feeling great today. And we flat out hit a Thunder, so that's going to do a ton of damage to this thing. Hopefully get it into a KO range, which it does. And we get a Paralysis. That is fantastic. 30% chance. Hopefully it gets fully paralyzed as well. And it just flat out misses Supersonic, so that works out great. And hopefully this Thunderbolt will just finish it off. So Raichu is certainly in a place where it could have taken a ton of damage. But luckily for us, uh, we survived that and we can move on. All that Koga has left though is a Crobat, so in honor of Makar, um, here's a Crobat for you if you're, if you're watching this. Um, I believe that Thunder will most definitely one hit KO this thing, however, um, I, just, I don't trust my luck with that this time around. 
I'm going to go for the safe Thunderbolt. Hopefully that will take it out. And luckily for us, he uses double team, so I most likely would have definitely missed Thunder in that case. Um, we do hit the Thunderbolt, which works out great, even through the evasion hacks. So hopefully this one hit KOs it. And just barely misses the one hit KO. Um, I have a feeling he's going to use a max potion, so I'm probably. I think I'm just going to fire off another Thunderbolt and hope for the best. And like I said, there goes a full restore. So that's the one dif one of the differences between first gen and second gen is they have those healing items that they can use, and it, it just gets annoying at times. Hopefully this puts it basically in the same spot. And I believe that at this range, Quick Attack should be able to finish it off. So that's what I'm going to go for. And it just barely fails to one hit KO, or fails to KO. Um, toxic misses, which is great, so hopefully one more quick attack can get the job done. And the good thing for us, double team came into, uh, didn't play into anything at all there, so... Uh, Koga and Will, we, they, they were just basically pushovers in this fight, so, or so far, so... We've got three more, uh, three more Elite Four members to take on, and so far, um, they haven't been putting up too much of an issue. Or too much of a fight, so, uh, at the moment I'm not too concerned about things. Um, right here though, um, I could probably heal up Maria right now, but I'm not too worried about it actually. Um, one of the things I could do actually is, um, I'm gonna take the EX, I'm gonna take the EXP share off of Melk just for this fight, take Xerxes Charcoal as well, and, uh, I'm gonna give Xerxes the EXP share. Just for this fight, because Xerxes isn't going to be involved against Koga. Um, so I feel content to throw him on there. Get him... Basically, have uh, Xerxes stay pretty close to the rest of the party in levels. But uh, Kote is probably going to lead the way in this fight. Koga's got, or Bruno has some uh, fighting-type Pokemon that are certainly weak to our Psybeam that we can take advantage of. And uh, Espeon's going to lead things off for us. I think Suicune is probably is going to get its first appearance in this fight, but I guess it's going to be against something that's going to be able to one-hit KO anyways. So here we go, third Elite Four member in Koga. We're certainly rolling along here, and uh, not too big of an issue. Like I, mostly like I predicted, because um, we've got the moves and the type advantage over a lot of these Pokémon, so um, we've certainly come prepared. Up up first though is. Uh, Koga's Hitmontop, who does have a super effective move against Espeon, but hopefully um, Espeon can get the job done before it's able to use that. So, here we go. Fire off a Psybeam against Hitmontop, and hopefully it KOs. Hitmontop does have a decent special defensive stat, so it does. it is able to one-hit KO, or is able to dodge that. Um, unfortunately, he's going to fire a dig at us, and there's not really anyone who I want to just flat out take this dig with so what I'm gonna do is um, I think I'm just gonna take the damage and hope for the best so um, hopefully Espeon just sur flat out survives this and I can just heal it after the fight I'm not too worried about it dig isn't really super effective against us and there you go it does minimal damage and uh, Espeon is able to finish it off with a quick attack anyways that's probably the biggest threat uh, defensively, so Espeon should be able to deal with everything else. Up next though is an Onyx, and like I said, this is going to be Maria's first appearance in our fights. And uh, Maria is certainly going to be able to one-hit KO this thing. If she could one-hit KO Gravelers, or level 40 Gravelers with uh, Waterfall, she's certainly going to be able to one-hit KO an Onyx with Surf. It's four times super effective, it's Stab, and Onyx has pretty weak special defense, so I'm in no doubt, there's no doubt in my mind that that's going to be able to one-hit KO, which it most certainly does. So there we go, uh, Xerxes and Maria both gaining experience off of that one. And uh, up next is a Hitmonchan, which I believe Kote should be able to deal with. It has no super effective moves against us, and uh, even if it does do damage, I, I'm pretty sure Kote should be able to handle whatever it dishes out. So. Let's fire off a Psybeam. There it goes, it fires off a Mach Punch. It's a stab, but we resist it, and uh, we should easily be able to fire back with a fantastic Psybeam. If this doesn't KO, 
which it does anyways. Uh, I probably would have just thrown on a heal on Espeon anyways, so it doesn't really matter for us. Up next though is a Hitmonlee, who I don't think has any um, priority, so at this point, um, with, Esp with Hitmonlee's lower defenses, um, Psybeam is flat out going to be able to one-hit KO it. If it could one-hit KO a Hitmonchan, it's going to be able to one-hit KO a Hitmonlee, no doubt. So, there we go. Hitmonlee down. And, uh, already, we've got one Pokemon left for Bruno. All he's got left is his Machamp. Which, you guys have no doubt remember from, uh, the first... Our first playthrough of Pokemon Yellow, where Haunter completely trolled Machamp. So, here we go. Um, unfortunately, Machamp has doesn't have has moves to cover ghastly and at this point so uh, we can't use the same sort of trick but um, I have a feeling like Machamp is probably gonna be able to KO Espeon if we don't want to KO but at this point um, let me just check Espeon's stats and uh, unfortunately you have to listen to that stupid annoying ringing like I could probably heal Espeon and then fire off a Psybeam but at this point, I feel as though I could probably just throw on a revive and a hyper potion and be fine. So, if Espeon dies, that's it's not the end of the world. Um, I could basically just bring it back to life with a revive and a hyper potion. We haven't used a lot of resources at this point in the uh, Elite Four, so I'm not too concerned. We, who knows, we could flat out one hit KO the thing, and we fail to. Uh, he does hit a rock slide, so this is probably going to spell the end of Espeon here. And just like I predicted, Espeon goes down. The good thing for us is we can flat out finish it off with something here. And uh, I believe anything in our party is going to get it done. I think uh, Xerxes is probably going to get it done. Um, he's probably going to full restore or something at this point. But there you go. Max Potion. I believe Xerxes should be able to two-hit KO with a Flame Wheel anyways. It's... it's the champ's uh, special defense isn't that great, so I certainly feel like we should be able to two-hit KO it. And sadly for us, we do not, and we're going to get hit with a super effective rock slide if we stay in. So, um, you know what? I'm going to have to uh, switch out to... Mm, this. That's kind of interesting. I, I wasn't really expecting that to to work that way. You know what, we're... We might have to fodder out Shuckle at this point. I, I don't really want to, but... Uh, shoot, we're gonna have to fodder out Shuckle. It's probably not the best use of him, but... Whatever. It's just how it goes. Hopefully Rockslide doesn't even KO, but... You know, it's not. It's gonna one hit KO a Shuckle. The good thing for us though is that we can now switch into, I guess, Maria or Melk. Um, Melk basically resists all of Machamp's attacks at this point, so I'm, I feel content in switching into Melk and uh, making the most. I, I, I'm gonna fire off an earthquake. Let's make the most of it. It's not super effective, but it's stab and uh, Melk has a pretty high physical attack, so we can probably do a decent chunk with it. So there you go. He fires off a cross chop, which does have a high crit ratio, so that could do a decent chunk, but luckily we resist it, and uh, we can just shrug it off there. I, I want to say that Surf can finish it off from here, but I just don't know, so I'm just going to fire off a safe earthquake. It's definitely going to KO it from here, but uh, I'd much rather have used Surf if I could have. So there we go, Xerxes gets to level 42, Malk gets to level 42. And uh, Xerxes is pretty close to level 43 now as well because of that extra boost in experience. So um, we did have a couple casualties there unfortunately, but them's the breaks. That's how it worked out. Um, the thing is Kote here is pretty close to a level up so I don't want to use a rare candy. I have three max revives and at this point I want to have uh, Espeon Actually, no, I don't want to waste Max Revive. Like I said, I'm going to use a Revive and a Hyper Potion on Espeon. So that's what I'm deciding to do, and we're just going to go ahead with that. A Hyper Potion seems like a bit of a waste at this point, though. Um, actually, you know what? 
Espeon can probably get away with just a revive. I'm I'm gonna th I'm gonna say that he's gonna be perfectly fine in in that sense. So you know what? We're just gonna leave it that way. Um, the downside here, though, is that the the lead Pokemon for the next elite four member is kind of a kind of an issue for us. Um, I think I certainly want to finally throw a Hyper Potion on Suicune here. So that's what I'm going to do. May as well finally heal it up. Um, I believe that Xerxes and Raichu should be fine where they are. So from this standpoint we should be okay. However, uh, I want to lead out with Nino King. The thing is, uh, Nino King has two double kicks. I would much rather have it a have it um, with a few more double kicks so those those few times we were wasting double kicks earlier on in the run I kind of regret it at this point but that's how it worked out and I just I don't, I don't want to waste any of these moves right now because we're so close to re getting a full heal on all of our moves all of our PP that at this point I feel content to just keep Malk where he is and uh, just hope for the best with our couple double kicks that Melk has. So the next gym leader, or the next Elite Four member, however, is Dark type. And realistically, there's only three Dark types in uh, Johto. There's Umbreon, there's Murkrow, and there's Houndoom, plus their respective, or plus Houndour technically. But uh, because of that, Karen doesn't have five Dark types, and so a double kick is useful against his, her first Pokemon, but not really as useful against the rest. So hopefully Melk can get the job done. Um, I feel like he should be able to, at least with his offensive capabilities, so that's what we're going to go with. So here we go, taking on the fourth fourth Elite Four member in Karen. She's got a bunch of Dark types as I mentioned, so hopefully we can take them out. We're certainly making a ton of progress though, and uh, <coughs> sorry about that. Um, Nevertheless, I'm not too worried about this fight. So here we go, fire off our two double kicks, hope for the best. I know it won't one-hit KO, and it won't do too much to Umbreon. Umbreon is pretty defensive on both sides of the uh, spectrum, and luckily for us he uses Faint Attack, because um, her Umbreon actually has some pretty annoying moves. So uh, we're going to fire off another double kick and hope for the best. We get one, maybe a, maybe a crit? Nope, no crit. And luckily for us, this this Umbreon can actually be a little bit hacksy. It does have Confuse Rate and Sand Attack, but luckily for us, he just flat out wanted to attack us, so we get away with just uh, firing off two double kicks and an Earthquake, and that's easily going to be able to t take out this Umbreon. So that's fantastic, and uh, we get to move on for, from something that could certainly pose a, a little bit of an, a nuisance to us. Uh, she's got four Pokemon left, and up next is a Vileplume which uh, no doubt Xerxes is going to be easily be able to take on. So this Vileplume can throw on a little bit of status with a uh, Stun Spore and it does have a healing move as well. However, I feel content that uh, Flame Wheel is going to be able to manage this uh, Vileplume, no doubt. So here we go, fire off a Flame Wheel and hope for the best. It gets, looks to be a, it's about a two hit KO. Luckily for us, Stun Spore misses. So, flat two hit KO for Xerxes. He's doing a fantastic job uh, pulling his weight in this Elite Four. He didn't exactly do too well against Machamp, but overall, everything that I've, I've needed him against, he's pulled, it, he's d pulled through, so. <coughs> Sorry about that. Nevertheless, up next is a Gengar. And this is precisely the reason why I kind of wanted Kote at full health. But the thing is, despite this being a Gengar, his, offen his only offensive move is Lick and instead of Shadow Ball, which makes no sense. So even though it's Lick, it's not really too powerful against us. And I believe that Psybeam is probably just going to be able to flat out KO this Gengar. Um, it might be a 2 hit KO, but that's at the worst. And this could be a flat out 1 hit KO, which it is. So realistically, that Gengar poses, poses no threat. I think it's got... Spite and Curse and Destiny Bond, but our our Espeon is faster, so we didn't even have to worry about that. Up next, though, was a Murkrow, and uh, for that reason, I want to send out Raichu, hopefully get the job done here. So, Ranko, do your stuff, and uh, 
I feel content in throwing on a Thunderbolt. I, I could use a Thunder, but Thunderbolt's been doing the job so far, and uh, at worst it's going to be a 2 KO. So, here we go, Thunderbolt. And we get a flat one-hit KO, so that's great. And these aren't even crits, so our Pokemon certainly have the offensive capabilities to get stuff done. Um, all that she's got left is a Houndoom, and that's going to be no threat to either Malk or Maria. And at this point, um, I want to say that uh, Maria is probably the thing we should be using against it. But the thing is, um, I'm, I, I don't really need Malk for the rest of the fights, so... I'm going to send out Malk, and hopefully Malk can get the job done. This is probably this is the highest level Pokemon that we've faced so far. It's level 47. And uh, hopefully not Poison Sting. Misclick. That sucks. We're going to take damage, but luckily for us, he gets poisoned, so that works out great. And he's going to fire a Flamethrower. That's going to do a decent chunk of damage to us. I wanted to fire a Flamethrower there. Or, I wanted to fire an Earthquake there, so that really stinks. And Malk is going to die in the process because of my misclick. So, sorry there, Malk. Um, you hadn't died in the rest of the run, and that's where you finally bite the dust. And because of it, Maria also takes a crunch to the face, which, what in the world? That got a crit as well, so that really stinks. This served better one hit KO this thing because I do not want to take another one of those, especially if it's going to crit. I did not expect it to do that much damage. And great for us, that Surf just flat out takes that Houndoom out. So, that really stinks. Uh, that, that's so annoying. Nevertheless, Maria gets out of there alive, and that Houndoom should have been flat out dead. I should have fired off an Earthquake and KO'd that thing, but whatever. We, we took it out, and uh, I'm not too worried about it. So all that's left between us and the championship is Lance, who's now the champion. Uh, Malk is now dead, Cooper's now dead, and all of our Pokemon are pretty much at half health. Uh, Xerxes isn't going to be too much of a use in this run, or in this battle. Um, Maria certainly is. Ranko is as well. So you know what, I'm going to want to heal up... Uh, I'm going to want to use a hyper, another Hyper Potion on Maria. Uh, she needs to be at full health for this battle because she's going to be taking on a lot of things. Um, Kote and Xerxes are probably going to be fodder at this point, uh, basically to help Maria get in those hits. But uh, for for this fight, we certainly want to lead off with Ranko and hope for the best. Let me just check uh, Ranko's item here for a second. She's got the quick claw, so ho hopefully she can get the job done. Um... Malk didn't have an item there, so I'm not I'm not too worried about him at this point. But he certainly pulled his weight. I, I definitely give props to you, Malk. Uh, thanks for helping out throughout the rest of the run. Uh, you certainly pulled your weight, so uh, you've done a fine job so far. Let's hope that Ranko can deal with the things that she needs to, though. So off we go. This is going to be basically uh, Suicune getting the job done. But here we go. This is Lance. This is the champion, and this is the final fight of Johto. I've been waiting for you, Andrew. I knew that with your skills, you would eventually reach me here. There's no need for words now. We will battle to determine who is the stronger of the two of us. As the most powerful trainer, and as the Pokemon League champion, I, Lance, the Dragon Master, accept your challenge. So here we go, classic champion music, taking on Lance. The, uh, the hacker of Gen 2. He's got some under-leveled fully evolved Pokemon, so you guys are going to get a kick out of this one here. But uh, first up is a Gyarados. Thunder most definitely would KO it because it's four times super effective, but I believe that Thunderbolt is going to get the job done. It's also four times super effective, Raichu's got Stab on it, and Gyarados is going to go down. Boom! There we go. One Pokemon down, four to go, but the, f the remaining four are certainly no pushovers by any means. Up next, is uh, Lance's first Dragonite, and that's precisely the reason we have brought Maria along. She's got her Roar Beams to hopefully fire in this guy's face, and uh, get the job done. Lance has three Dragonites, all of them underleveled. I believe Dragonite um, evolves at level 55, and somehow Lance has been hacking, so hopefully we can get past this hacker. Fire off an Aurora Beam, four times super effective, 
I don't know if it's going to KO because Dragonite is a little bulky, so it's probably going to be a two-hit KO at worst. And uh, luckily for us, we dodge a Thunder Wave, so that's fantastic. Any status that we can dodge there is certainly going to help us in the long run of things. So, one Dragonite down, and he's got two more remaining, so hopefully we can deal with them without too much trouble. However, Lance still has four more Pokemon, and uh, as I said, there are no pushovers. Up next, though, is another Dragonite. This one, I believe, is also level 47, and I think this one has super effective moves against us. If I'm not mistaken, this one, I believe, has Thunder, but uh, we're going to have to find out. Hopefully we don't. Hopefully we can freeze or flat out KO it. Maybe get a crit. Maybe get some sort of luck on our side. And uh, we get none. So he fires off a Thunder Wave and that's going to cripple us a little bit. Hopefully we can manage around that. Hopefully we can just flat out hit through this paralysis. All we need is one hit. So just dodge a hit. Here we go. There goes a Hyper Beam. And uh, hopefully we don't get paralyzed. So that works out great for us. We don't. And uh, at this point, I think Suicune can take any other hit, but um, I would much rather that Paralysis be removed, because as you've seen, we're failing to one-hit KO things. Um, so at this point, because I need Suicune for a couple other things, I'm going to switch out. I'm going to go into Kote. Or... No, I, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into Kote as fodder, and uh, hope for the best here. I need to cure off this. Um, this is dra this is Lance's most powerful Dragonite. It's level 50, so if we can get past this thing, we should be in the clear. However, um, this Dragonite, I need Suicune against most definitely. So Paralyzed Cure Berry is gonna go for. Uh, Suicune, I don't think any more Dragonites have Thunder Wave, so I should be in the clear for Paralysis at this point. If Outrage KOs Espeon, we can basically just switch back into Suicune, hopefully tank the hit, and continue from there. So, sorry Kote, you had to go down, but it was worth it in the process because we can now send out Maria, who can hopefully dish out a decent, decent chunk of damage with this Aurora Beam. Maybe get a Freeze or a Crit? Maybe? Maybe some luck on our side? And uh, that looks to be a, about a two-hit KO as well. I believe that Suicune has the defenses to tank this Outrage. At least it should, which it does. That's fantastic. Um, and it looks like Suicune can probably just flat-out KO this Dragonite with an Aurora Beam. So that's what I'm going to go for. I could heal up and just take the damage from an, another Outrage, but I just don't want to risk a crit or something stupid happening. So we're just going to finish off that Dragonite and proceed on that way. He's got two Pokemon left, and uh, up next is his Charizard, who is a, I guess, a pseudo dragon type. But um, pretty much, uh, if Suicune could survive a hit from uh, Dragonite, she's gonna be able to survive a hit from Charizard. So we're gonna go for a Surf. Hopefully, we want to KO the thing and not even have to worry about it. So here we go. Go go Surf. Hopefully, KO this Charizard with one hit. And it just fails to one-hit KO, and we get hit with a Hyper Beam. So that's going to hurt. Probably going to do a decent chunk. And Suicune just barely survives with 5 HP. So, like I said, getting those few extra levels early on, you you guys probably mocked me for getting those few... <laughs> training up that little bit. But uh, at this point, um, I'm going to heal up Maria just to be safe. We've got a free turn anyways, and Maria is basically needed to take on the next Pokemon. So... We're going to fire off a Hyper Potion, even though I probably don't need to, and uh, finish this thing off, because here we go. Uh, Charizard has to recharge anyways, and I can basically fire off a Surf and be safe here. So Charizard is down, and one Pokemon separates us from becoming the new champion, and uh, hopefully we can take it down. We've got three Pokemon to his one, and if we beat this... We basically get a full heal on our entire party, and we get all our PP restored. So, here we go. Lance has got an Aerodactyl, we've got a Suicune, we've got the type advantage, and we've got two moves that are super effective against it. Uh, Surf is probably going to be our better option because it's stab and super effective. The only downside is that Aerodactyl is faster than us, so 
Uh, Rock Slide could flinch us, it could be annoying in that sense. It doesn't flinch, and I'm pretty sure that Surf is going to be a one-hit KO. At worst, a two-hit KO, so here we go. Surf just barely fails to get the KO. I believe that Lance is probably going to fire off a healing item here, and surprisingly he doesn't. So we're going to take, take a Hyper Beam, and that doesn't crit, and Suicune is going to finish this thing off. So Suicune definitely pulled its weight in this Lance fight, and there you go folks. We are now the new champion. So we got through all of Johto, we didn't use a Poke Center, we didn't use a Mart, and we finally pulled through this thing. And uh, more or less, the Elite Four was kind of a pushover to us. Uh, the only thing is, our journey isn't over. We still have an entire half of the game to proceed through. We've got all of the Kanto badges to, to uh, collect, and uh, Lance is now going to recognize us for our strength. As a trainer, you will continue to grow strong with your Pokemon. And what is this? Oh, it's Mary! Oh no, it's all over! If you weren't so slow, Professor Oak. Uh, Andrew, it's been a long while. You certainly look more impressive. Your conquest of the League is just fantastic. Your dedication, trust, and love for your Pokemon made this happen. Your Pokemon were outstanding, too. Because they believed in you, as a trainer, they pers persevered. Congratulations, Andrew. Let's interview the brand new champion. Except, uh, Lance is too cool for this. He says, this is getting to be a bit too noisy. Could you come with me? So, Mary and Professor Oak are left there to wander on their own, so... Nevertheless, Lance is going to take us through the Hall of Fame room where our Pokemon are now going to be inducted to the Hall of Fame. It's been a long time since I came here. This is where we honor the League Champions for all eternity. Their courageous Pokemon are also inducted. Here today, we witness the rise of a new League Champion, a trainer who feels compassion and trust towards all Pokemon, a trainer who succeeded through perseverance and determination, the new League Champion who has all the makings of greatness. Andrew, allow me to register your Pokemon and your partners as champion. So, here we go. Our main party getting inducted. So, s saving the game. First up, we've got Raichu, the, or Ranko the Raichu. Certainly pulled its weight. Fired off some very powerful electric attacks. T Xerxes the Typhlosion, who, although he wasn't as useful in the mid parts of the run, he certainly pulled his weight at the end. Maria the Suicune, we caught her late, and even though it took seven Ultra Balls to catch her, she certainly proved her merit against Lance. Malk the Nidoking as well, definitely showed his dominance, taking down several gym leaders, and uh, only dying in the final fight, or in the second last fight against Karen. Uh, Kote the Espeon also pulled his weight as one of the most powerful hitters in our team, and uh, uh, the honorary Shuckle named Cooper who uh, helped change a bunch of berries into berry juice. So now uh, we're going to get our Pokedex um, analyzed here. We've got 190 Pokemon seen, 23 Pokemon owned. Our rating is, you're getting good at this, but you have a long way to go. And he's right, we've got an entire half of the game to go still. So here we go. These are the Crystal Version credits. And uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this first half of the playthrough because we still have a long way to go. We still have eight more badges to collect and one really powerful trainer who uh, still has yet to be named, but for those of you who have played through second gen, at this point I have no doubts that you guys, pretty much all of you, know exactly who I'm talking about. And uh, he's a pretty big threat that we're going to have to prepare for. I'm not too worried about the Kanto gyms, but that trainer especially, he's going to be a tough one, because uh, what can I say, uh, he's the most powerful trainer in the game. And if we're not prepared for all the things that he's going to throw at us, uh, we're basically going to be game over. But uh, hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully we get through everything. And uh, this ha has been a long episode, but it's definitely been worth it. Um, we got through all five Elite Four fights. Well, the Elite Four and the Champion. And uh, look at those dancing dittos. They look pretty sweet. We've, we've, uh, count we've conquered the Hacker and Lance. We've... We've made it through all eight Johto gyms, so it's certainly been a long journey, and uh, thank thankfully, thankfully, um, having beaten the Pokemon League, we get an entire party heal. So this is forced upon me. I can't really avoid it because the game just forces you to take it, 
and uh, we're just gonna have to continue on in Kanto and all the stuff that ha is ahead of us with our newly revived party and um, our partly our party if it was able to take on the Pokemon League certainly should be able to take on the remaining um, the remaining gyms in Kanto I believe we're fully prepared we've got the type advantage and uh, we should be able to continue from here so that's the end of Johto folks and uh, just to show you that I do auto heal I'm gonna uh, show you the party and save the game there so continue 81 hours of gameplay that's mostly due to speed up but if you look at our party there we go we're fully healed we've got all eight badges and we're now the new league champions so there's Raichu there's well I guess I should show you the PP so there's Raichu fully healed Typhlosion, Sweek, eh, Suicune, Malk, the Nidoking, King, Espeon, and Cooper, the Shuckle. So, uh, big thanks to Ranko, Xerxes, Maria, Malk, Kote, and Cooper, and everyone else that's in our PC, because uh, you guys certainly got the job done. And we take one step, and Professor Elm is going to call us. He's got something for us, could we swing by the lab? And that's basically the ticket to uh, heading off to Kanto where we're going to take on the next day gym badges. So I'm going to save it here before we go pick, off, pick, up, the, pick up that ticket uh, for the SSN. And uh, from here on out, um, it's going to be a journey in Kanto. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed the Johto half of things. But uh, we're going to have a kind of... A, a return to our Pokemon Yellow playthrough where we took on Kanto. So that's it for this episode. Hopefully you've enjoyed the uh, immense, immense amount of action in this uh, this episode especially. And uh, I guess I'll see you guys next time for uh, our journey to Kanto. So I'll see you guys then. Peace. <laughs>